Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody and today I'm checking out Neofly which is a free Bush Pilot career mode add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now this is not a tutorial, it's a first look, you'll be learning along with me but I just uh, saw it on MSFS add-ons, I've put a link down in the description and I thought it looked really interesting so I thought I'll give it a bit of a whirl and see what it's like. But before we do that, a reminder to please go ahead and smash that like button down below the YouTube algorithm loves it uh, and also if you're new how about consider subscribing it costs nothing at all except just a little bit of self-respect and let's be honest who's not willing to give up some of that anyway here we go everybody it's a separate um, executable file uh, that you need to open up and it gives you this screen that we can see right here you can see I've got Microsoft Flight Simulator open in the background. Now when you do open it for the first time, it gives you a warning that basically says, hey, this is the first time you've launched this. What, wherever you decide to start, that's where your pilot's gonna be positioned. And the only way you're gonna be able to actually move the position of the pilot is by either flying a mission and moving them to wherever, the, wherever you end up, or having to pay to relocate them somewhere else. So that's just something to take into account. Uh, and I haven't shown that because that was uh, when I uh, revved up the application, it, it told me that, so I just thought I'd mention it. What we'll do is we'll take a quick look through each of these tabs and an overview of what the app looks like. Then we'll set up a flight, we'll go ahead and fly it, and we'll see uh, how this thing goes. So as you can see, this is the intro screen right here. Uh, and we'll start down the bottom. You can see what they're talking about in that warning, that you can set your pilot position to whatever you want. Uh, you can either fly there or pay to go there. Uh, so there's the option down there to do that. But what you want to do for a start is think about where do you want to conduct your first flight from? What part of the world? And you can select anywhere at all and it will generate a whole bunch of missions for you to uh, run from there. So for us, let's go ahead. I'm just going to randomly put in YBTH, which is Bathurst in Australia. Uh, we've got the great race, the Bathurst 1000 coming up very, very soon for those into motorsport. And so I just thought, let's choose that. It's got some pretty uh, cool sort of uh, surrounding area that, I, that we can fly to. And as you can see, it's gone ahead and created this massive list of uh, missions that you can go ahead and conduct. So uh, the mission seems to be broken down by uh, the amount of cargo. Uh, or passengers that you're going to fly, also what the flight plan is, uh, the distance of the flight, what the pay is going to be, uh, when the flight expires or the mission expires, and then it gives you a little bit of info. And this is where uh, just taking a quick look at this uh, makes it quite interesting because you're not necessarily flying into an airport. You could actually be just flying and landing uh, ra randomly, I should say, landing anywhere on the map. So if we look at this one here, drop zone, uh, YBTH to a drop zone, so it's not to an airport like that one. And you can see the circle on the map right here. And the instructions say land less than two nautical miles from minus 33.14. So those are the obviously some coordinates. So it gives you the red circle on the map. So you've got to land in here uh, in the Mookley Murram Ban, Ban State Conservation Area. Apologies, I absolutely butchered that. It's right by Caper Tree, right here. You've got to land on the side of the road in amongst this bush. So, I mean, if that's not bush flying, I don't know what is. So that's kind of cool. Otherwise, you can go ahead and select like more of a standard type mission, it looks like, where you fly into a particular uh, airport. So this one here into YSCO. Now you'll see beside here that you've got these fly buttons. Now I assume that if it's got a fly button, it means you are qualified uh, to fly this flight because number one, you have a qualification in the aircraft. Or number two, you have uh, the right rank that ha allows you to fly different types of missions. So the higher rank you have, uh, the, the, the more missions you're going to get access to, which kind of makes sense. So... That's what you do. What you've got to do by the looks of it is you just go ahead and select your mission and then uh, away you go. So let's look at the other tabs and then we'll go ahead and set up a flight. So we've got the tracking page right here. So you uh, once you're set up in the simulator, you connect and fly. I assume these all need to be green and you're good to go. You do have to, uh, one little warning they do put in the getting started pages to make sure that the aircraft you select uh, has got enough room to carry the cargo that you're looking to carry. Uh, also, you can ca you can fly any type of aircraft you like as long as it fits into the category that you've got a qualification. And if we go into the next tab, you can see all the different categories right here. At the moment, you start with single engine piston. So you can fly any single engine piston aircraft you want. 
as long as it's a single engine piston aircraft. Now, as you uh, rank up and uh, earn a bit more money, you can then open up uh, different categories that will allow you to fly different types of aircraft, so your multi-engine piston, etc. So that's all pretty straightforward. As you can see up here, we've got XP. Uh, I'm in the cadet rank, so as I assume as I complete uh, missions, it's going to go ahead and rank me up. So that's kind of cool. Here goes your logs, which I assume will just log your flights as you go. Uh, and here goes some information about NeoFly itself. So if you, obviously if you do enjoy this uh, this app, it's a free add-on like I said, but they do uh, have a little donate button there. So if you want to flick them some money if you really enjoy it, uh, that's completely up to you. Okay, with all that said, how about we go ahead and set up our first flight and give it a bit of a whirl and see what it's all about. So I'm just going to sort this by distance because I'm going to fly a pretty short flight just to uh, kind of check out how this all works so i've got a few options here we've got emergency land wherever you can on the landing zone to bring the medic uh we've got a few there i'd probably rather fly into uh an airport just for my first one just to make it a little bit easier um although it is tempting to fly into the middle of nowhere but how about we go ahead and uh, complete this one right here in fact i don't think i'm going to be able to because it says that the car goes 2432 now, my aircraft, uh, the single-engine uh, piston aircraft, the Cessna 172 or 152, uh, can't carry that much, so that's not going to work for me. Uh, so how about we go ahead with this one here, nice simple one, YPKS. Uh, it is 73 nautical miles, that's kind of cool, it's not too long. Uh, and uh, we've got, uh, what have we got right here? It's a cargo mission, straightforward cargo mission. So that sounds like a pretty good mission for me. So I'm going to press the fly button. Uh, and it takes me to the tracking page. So we'll go ahead and we will open up the, um, or we'll set up our flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator and then we'll get into it. Okay, so I've set up the flight here in my world map, uh, starting at Bathurst. I am starting at the gate and that way the engine is shut down. It does say in the getting started job that you want to make sure that your aircraft is uh, in the parking spot with your engine off. So we'll do that. Uh, and we're going to parks there, YPKS. I'm just going to go in the trusty old Cessna 172, the G1000 version, uh, just to make life as easy as possible on this very first flight. I've got the uh, live weather conditions. It's looking a bit murky, so this could be a bit of a challenge. Uh, but let's go ahead and press fly. I'll meet you once we're on the apron. Right, we're sitting on the ground here in Bathurst, so I'll go ahead and press connect and fly. Transporter and what they from said dispatch. is exactly Good what's happened. The is cargo that mission all... will start as soon as you get on your plane in the parking. Okay, we got a little bit of a radio message right there. Um, but what it's saying is that everything will be green except motor on, which makes sense totally because uh, the engine is currently off. So let's go ahead and start up the aircraft. Right, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead, turn the uh, masters on. The fuel is all good. I always forget that. Mixture is rich. That's good. A little bit of throttle. Let's throw on the beacon. Okay, let's give this a bit of a tweak. Transporter form dispatch. Loading cargo. Please stand by. And hopefully you heard that message. They said that they are loading the cargo. So you get the radio messages coming in, which is kind of cool. Our engine start up. Let's turn on our avionics. I'll go ahead and turn on our nav, strobe, and taxi lights also. And our pitot heat. It's a little bit cold. Just make sure we don't uh, lose that. And uh, as you can see, our track is loaded into the aircraft. Uh, let's just bring the app across here. And it's, uh, I can hear sort of a whole lot of creaking and stuff. Maybe that's them loading everything up. So Transporter. Okay, Transporter it's saying it's loading. Dispatch. The cargo is on board. You are clear to taxi to the runway and take off. There we go. I'm cleared to taxi to the runway and take off, everybody. So good as gold. Let's go ahead and do that. So, so far, so good. It's all pretty easy. So what I'll do is I'll... Uh, Taxi over to the runway, let's take off, and then I'll sort of give you highlights throughout the flight uh, as we go and complete this cargo run. All right, landing lights are on, and uh, runway uh, 35 cleared for takeoff. Let's do it. It's definitely looking a bit overcast today. A little bit wobbly down the runway. Let's rotate. Transporter from dispatch. Fly safe. Excellent. Told me to fly safe. So yeah, there we go. We got the uh, 
We've got the notification to say that we are all good to go. Now let's just start to uh, turn off onto our heading. So, so far so good everybody. So what I'll do is, uh, like I said earlier, I'll just sort of go through and if we do get any radio messages or any highlights, I'll just let you know. And uh, we'll make our way over to deliver our cargo. So I'll catch you very, very soon. Now I couldn't come to Bathurst without checking out Mount Panorama, the motor racing track, very famous uh, down these parts of the world for the uh, Bathurst 1000, a thousand kilometre race, takes about six hours there or thereabouts with the uh, V8 supercars racing each other, uh, it's coming up in October in fact, so uh, really looking forward to that race and it's uh, a really iconic circuit that's a uh, public road during the day, uh, but then transforms into this amazing race circuit uh, for race weekends, so had to go and check that out. All right, here we are at our cruising altitude of 6,000 feet, everybody. We're moving in a westerly direction in Australia. That's even uh, thousands for your, your uh, altitude. And as you can see, you've got that sort of rough, barren Australian landscape below us. Uh, what I'll do is let me just grab the uh, NeoFly app and put it up right here. Uh, as you can see, the things that don't apply are now red. You're not at the uh, parking anymore. Uh, and the parking brake is not set, not at the airport. What it does do is, as you can see in the little moving map here, it does show you your current position. Now if you did go ahead and take one of those missions where you land in the middle of nowhere, uh, this map's going to be very, very helpful for you because you're going to be able to see exactly where you need to land. Uh, so that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, but so far so good. Uh, as you can see, um, we are moving in the direction that we need to be moving. And so I uh, haven't had any radio transmissions thus far, so uh, when I do, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we'll catch you once we uh, land there in our destination in YPKS. So let's uh, talk very, very soon. All right, everybody, uh, short finals right here. A pretty calm flight coming in. We set up nicely here at 70 knots. There or thereabouts. Let's see whether I can finally land smoothly with this blimmin' joystick sensitivity issue. Okay. Coming in runway 29 right here. Across the threshold. Let's just pull the power now. A little bit of a flare. Transporter from dispatch. Nice landing. Go to the next parking and put your parking brake on. I'll be in touch. Well, there we go. Hopefully you heard that message. I got a nice landing. I was pretty happy with that, actually. I'll meet you over at the uh, parking spot, and we'll see, uh, we'll wrap up the flight. Okay, everybody, uh, I've run into a slight problem here. As you can see here, my flight log is showing that I actually crashed, and I'll show you where I crashed. If you look at Parks uh, Airport right here. I landed on this runway 29. I taxied back here, uh, but it wouldn't show on my little pilot log here, uh, sorry, on the tracking, the plane at parking was red. So I, even when I set my parking brake, it still didn't recognize uh, and unload the flight. The reason is, is because the offload point is actually down in here, as you can see, right down by this these trees. So what I did, is I taxi down this roadway and I was just going to taxi into here and uh, obviously that's something that probably just needs to be amended a little bit but no major I thought I'd taxi in here and then just unload my goods and we'd be good as gold the only problem is is there's a tree right in this part of the uh, of this hedgerow right here or this uh, forest right here and I forgot that I had my crash enabled and it hit <laughs> the tree and and of course it dumped the flight so I need to make sure I've got crash resistance uh, or sorry crash detection off until uh, they just fix this bug of actually having the uh, landing point in the middle of the runway. Now this is bush piloting so <laughs> you've got to put up with that. So what I'm going to do is just a very quick flight to another airport uh, just to test out the unload system just to make sure that uh, we're good to go there. Okay ladies and gentlemen I'm throwing my parking brake on here uh, so I'll go ahead and do that right there. And I'll bring the uh... dispatch from medic. I'm on my way. There we go. 
you got the medic on the way. What I've actually done is I've gone ahead and done a drop zone, a drop zone mission, everybody, because uh, I had an issue with the other one that I just did, and I'm just going to explain that in a minute. But everything's happening right now. Transporter from dispatch. Good job, pilot. You saved a life today. Find a way to come back home. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So that uh, mission is completed, and it was a heck of a lot of fun, I've got to say. So if we just go into our logs right here. Uh, that second mission that I did, it was at an airport, and once again, uh, the parking spot was way off somewhere, and uh, by the way, one thing I've learned is you have to have crash resistance on, and that doesn't work where some of these specific uh, parking spaces are at airports, uh, because this one was like in the river, so you crash, and boom, the mission's over. Whereas this one here, which is basically you've got to land within two nautical miles of the spot, and as you can see here, I found a nice field to land in, uh, and the mission got completed on within two nautical miles. I think what they need to do is actually make it at the uh, airport drop-off zones to have maybe a one nautical mile perimeter or something like that. Therefore, you don't have to park like specifically at a spot. Uh, so that's probably the one piece of feedback I'm going to give to the developer. Apart from that, I tell you what, this mission here was a lot of fun. Uh, basically, uh, it was only 11 nautical miles. It was an emergency. There was an accident over here, and we had to fly the medic. And you heard some of the end of it right there. And so I had to land in this field, they got out, went and did the mission, and here you go, I got a success bonus, a comfort bonus, and a few other things. So if I look at my pilot, um, I've got 94 XP, next rank is 200. I did get promoted to second officer, which is fantastic, uh, and I got a little bit of cash there too. Uh, what else, uh, can we see much in here? Uh, let me just uh, pay, there we go, $1,881. So it wasn't really a huge money maker, but it did give me a decent amount of XP by the looks of it. So uh, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there goes NeoFly, Bush Pilot Career add-on. It's free, and considering it's got just that one little issue, which I'm sure they can um, resolve, I think it, this could be a heck of a lot of fun. Like I said, I'd recommend maybe just doing the, uh, the drop zone missions because you can land anywhere within a two nautical mile uh, radius, so that works well. Uh, and but um, the airport ones are just a little bit dodgy because some of the specific parking points are in like in scenery or something like that. But for a free add-on, guys, get into it. Link down in the description. Go and give it a whirl. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So I want to say thank you for watching. Make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe if you are new. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.